Let's see. The acts of the flesh are obvious, Paul says. Sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, orgies. How many of them can you check off? Won't, 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 huh? Really? Won't, 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 wait a minute. I don't know about that. Won't, won't. You know what really gets me about this? He says, the acts of the flesh are obvious. Some aren't so obvious to me. You know that drug use, some have said that drug usage is like unto witchcraft. You say, oh, I'd never play with a Ouija board. I'd never go see a fortune teller. I, I don't even read the horoscopes much. Fortune cookies? Ah, come on, preacher. Did you know that rebellion is as witchcraft? Huh? Hold on a second. <laughs> I better put these socks back on. Can you get a close up of this, Chris? <laughs> these are my Sunday socks. No holes. Took my weekly bath last night, clean between my toes. <laughs> Thank you. I can hear you. What gets me about this list is this and the like. First of all, it says the works of the flesh are obvious, and there's a big old list of them, but then it adds this, and the like. That's a killer, and the like. You cannot isolate the works of the flesh to a yellow pad and check it off. I was talking to Brother Bob. He's not in the room, so I'm talking behind his back. But Brother Bob said, yeah. I went through legalism and dress code. I noticed he was in shorts and sandals today. Old hairy legs hanging out everywhere. He said, one time an usher told me I couldn't take up an offering if I was wearing shorts. And then he said, the legalists are all gone. I said, Brother Bob, as long as there's one person in the church, the legalists aren't all gone. We all are legalists, all of us. It's just a matter of when your issue comes up. I'm not a hat-wearing kind of guy, but I do wear socks, people. Yeah. You will never see me barefoot on the platform. Oh, oh. You will not normally see me barefoot on the platform. These are my dress shoes, and these ones... They fit good. I know where they are. I put them on, fit good with the shoe. I read a book once about the personal life of the pastor. And it said the pastor, now the book was probably from the 40s, 30s or 40s, the pastor of a parish. So we don't use the word parish here, do we? So, you know, you kind of look at the context. Okay, okay, Pastor Perry. The pastor must never go to the door in his stocking feet. I thought, oh, come on. Wow. I mean, I go to the door barefoot sometimes. What I'm saying is that the pastor must always have this, always be dressed to answer the door to meet the public. That's why some of you, you know, you need to take that fish off your car. Because you're not all that gracious out on the road. You're giving Christians a bad name. You know, when I put those magnets, uh, we will pick you up for church. Pastor Rob and Kathy, when I put those magnets on the car, I'm very conscious of every mistake that I make on the road. Whenever I wear a shirt that says, Bell Road Baptist Church, 
You know, I got, there's just some things I can't do in public. I mean, I gotta brush my teeth if I'm gonna wear a Bell Row Baptist shirt. Now, if I wear a First Baptist doll, I don't care. I do anything I want. <laughs> it's the and the like that gets us. It's supposed to be obvious, people. He says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness gentleness, and self-control. You wouldn't want to check, 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 check. There's so much joy to be had on this side. You want to chew, 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 enjoy the fruit of the Spirit. And know the difference. Yes, they are diametrically opposed, these two lists. But where is the freedom, people? Did you look at your bulletin? I, I went to a little get-together after church last week after preaching this powerful message about freedom. And my sister Barbara, Rabola, she will rarely, rarely gives feedback in sermons, but she said, Pastor, you realize that you said Statue of Liberty is in Washington, D.C.? She resides in the overlooking of the New York Harbor. I said, what? Washington, D.C.? She said, you said it twice. Huh? Really? I believe her. See, now at age 54, I don't argue so much with people. If they tell me I did something, I figure, okay. Golly, I guess I did. I don't even recall saying that. What I said was, the first occurrence, that um, we saw a picture of the guy looking out of the crown. I said, you used to be able to go up to the torch. They closed that off a long time ago, but due to renovation and national security and such, sometimes... It's closed off. You can't even go up to the crown. So I said, so, if you go to Washington, D.C., wanting to go in the crown, you might not be able to. I can clarify that. If you go to Washington, D.C., wanting to go in the crown, you will not be able to. <laughs> you show up, where's the Statue of Liberty? Had one person say, yep, yeah, yeah, you did say Washington. I was thinking it was New York, but, I mean, the preacher said Washington. I figured, well, I guess it is. <laughs> she had never been there. Golly. And then I said it again, something about looking over Washington. I mean, we could say it's the early signs of Alzheimer's. <laughs> we could. Or we could just say, hey, you know what? That's why they put erasers on pencils. Sometimes you make mistakes. So I clarified for you, put it in the bulletin. If you want to go to the Statue of Liberty, there's a phone number call. 212-561-4588. It's Renna Webb's phone number. No, not really. I'm just joking, Renna. I want to go to the Statue of Liberty. Okay, the works of the flesh are obvious. Here's something I want you to pay attention to. Key words that stuck out to me. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. It's a lifestyle of debauchery, dissensions, adultery, fornication, hatred. It's a whole lifestyle, and it's the picture of the person who has not received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Because and the like is in there. It's all in there. Jesus told us that if you have held hatred toward a person, you have murdered that person in your heart. If you have looked upon another person with lust, you have committed adultery in your heart. So and the like is a pretty big deal. You cannot check it off. So thinking deacon, I'm glad that you told us that you'd rather bring the drunk in without a bunch of bruises on your face because you've learned something growing up in your job. And that you also understand that when people are new at this, they might tend to get the drunk in to the jail, but they might have some bruises along the way and the, and the drunk might have hurt himself because of inexperience. I 
I warn you as I did before that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. And our call is to try to move some people from that lifestyle without Christ over to the lifestyle of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness. Self-control. The fruit of the Spirit. Against such things there is no law. It sticks out to me, and the like sticks out, that that's not really doable. To totally check off that list. But in love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things, see, that's not an exhaustive list either. Against such things, there is no law. There's no limit. There's no limit to the benefits of grace. For those who belong to Jesus Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. This makes me think about, you know, the guy that hung here? No, not the Bell Road member. I'm talking about the real man who hung. Jesus. He was crucified once for my sin. If I look at this afresh, to, cru to crucify my flesh is to have my flesh nailed to the cross in Christ. Christ is hanging on the cross to pay for all my sin. For my sin to be crucified, for the passions and the lust of my flesh, the desires of my flesh to be crucified, I've got to continually sing about the cross. I have to continually focus on the cross. I can't crucify my flesh. I can identify with the Christ who was crucified. I can find myself in Christ. My flesh can be crucified with all its passions and desires if I depend upon Christ and what his word has to say. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. That's printed in our bulletin, I believe. It's usually up there along with the covenantal. Points. I will support the testimony of my church by attending faithfully, by living a godly life, by giving regularly. Against such things there is no law. I ought to find a great amount of joy in attendance, a faithful attendance, and in living a godly life. It ought to be a joyful thing to live a godly life, and it ought to bring great joy to me to give regularly. Against such things there is no no law. And so if we walk in the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. If I got saved by the Spirit, then let me take each step by the Spirit. Now what's that got to do with the barefoot thing? Because I did, I started out that way. It's not that big a deal. But it is because it can cause trouble in the fellowship. Because some people were raised that when you go to church, you don't just wear what you were doing chores in yesterday. You put on your very best. And then if you're an argumentative person, you can go, yeah, but the very best, you know, that's an inside thing. It's not an outside thing. Yeah. The person would say, yeah, well, yeah, I was taught that too. Both are right. Well, if a person can't afford a suit, then they should look in their closet and pull out the nicest clothes they do have, right? But why am I the only guy with a suit on? Have you no suits? Am I the only guy with a suit on in the whole place? 
Yeah, but Pastor, you're wearing a red tie. Now we all know what that means. <laughs> Actually, I had a lady who went to a very conservative Baptist church on the East Coast. And as a child, she said the men were not allowed to wear a red tie. She just was floored that the preacher... I like red ties. But I was telling one of my deacons that I don't wear red ties when I serve the Lord's Supper. Because it's like, it's festive. It, you know, it's always Christmas. Red. But at funerals, I don't... I just don't wear red. I wear black and white. You know, the penguin look <laughs> at a funeral. I, these days, I would go to a funeral if I didn't have time to put a suit on, if I'm not up on the platform or anything. But I would try to dress nice because it's respectful for those who are in mourning. And if you go to the trouble to put on a suit, put on clean clothes and black if possible, then you're showing those who are mourning the loss of their loved one that you're with them. That's respectful. And is that the Christian thing to do, to show respect, yes. to show honor? Yes. Yeah, it is. Yes. If you were taught that. And so when I come to the Lord's table, and the table's there, I don't like seeing junk sitting on the table. I saw a hula hoop sitting on the table once, and I took it off. That's just me, though. It's not that big a deal. But I don't like to see the Lord's table being used for, you know, I, I don't really think we ought to stand on that to do the, you know, teach the children how to do their choreography on the night of BBS. Not the Lord's Supper table. But, you know, it really doesn't matter, right? Ultimately, it doesn't matter, but it's kind of a sign of respect. Uh, I put the cross there. Today I pulled it out and I stuck it there. And I wouldn't want to see a lot of garbage, like a Coke can sitting down there and some popcorn, a cup of two-week-old remains of coffee sitting on the table, a pair of socks for the guy who took his shoes off and forgot where he put his socks. I wouldn't want the cross to be all cluttered up. But how do I get that across to the next generation? without being legalistic? Through discussion. And through sharing, this might not be a big deal to you, but it would really bless my heart if you brushed your teeth before you came to church. I mean, as a matter of toothpaste, I can get it for you. I know Jesus loves you just the way you are, but it's kind of hard for me to love you. Look at the last verse of Verse 26, I think it is. Let us not become conceited, provoking and envying each other. When I was making that list, it was all about me, 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 me. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do this. I am going to do this. I am going to do this. You like the hymns, but you know the hymns were all me, me, me. The hymns we sang today, me, me, me. Leaning on the everlasting arms. I have, I have, I have, I have. There's no, we have, it's I have. <laughs> Fellowship with my Lord's own ear. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior, forever. He sought me and he bought me. Where's the us? Song leader, you got any us songs in that hymnal? I'm just teasing. But see, this is an us verse. Let us not become conceited. There are some people in here who probably could ex expound upon the word of God better than me. So let us not become conceited. Let's not think of ourselves more highly than we are. I'm just doing the best I can, and I make mistakes. So I, I wanted to clear it up because I didn't want a whole generation thinking that Statue of Liberty was in Washington. Some terrorist moved it over to New York Bay for a practical joke. So I had to say, you know, we all make mistakes. But let not my mistakes cause a disturbance in our fellowship. I didn't know that offends you. I'm sorry. I really didn't know that offends you. I'll try not to, but if I do, would you forgive me? 
And you're going to come back and talk to me again. Don't get mad at me. Come back and talk to me again. Let's not become conceited, provoking. <laughs> this girl was over here. I, I didn't even know she was barefoot, but this girl was playing keyboard a couple weeks ago. And she was barefoot. I didn't know it until I saw Christy's video. Christy <laughs> went over and shot the video of the guitar player barefoot. This, these feet didn't know it was a keyboard because she just went on the ground. These feet barefoot. Over here, the guy had, don't know who it was, but uh, just saw his feet. But he was over here somewhere, barefoot with a suntan line from a sandal. Sandal sitting right there. Hairy legs, so I think it was a man. But these days, you don't know. Your grace is enough. she was just being cool because her big brother you know she always wants to be like her big brother <laughs> you know she chads my hero I thought okay she's just being cool like him he's being cool you know I'm gonna take my shoes off too but you know what it really was just a matter of practic practicality she had worn high heels to be with the ladies who were singing a cappella, I think and with her, pet, with her little keyboard pedal, she couldn't function it with the heel. So she took the shoes off. Anybody take your shoes off when you're driving a car? Uh, no, that offends me. You know, there's actually stores like Kmart, Target, might say, or restaurants that say, no shoes, no shirt, no service. <laughs> You don't even have to pay a sign maker. You just go out and buy one of those. No shoes, no shirt, no service. And stick it on the front door of Bell Road. Good idea, huh? You know, in a normal Baptist church, somebody could just say, I I'd like to make a motion. No shoes, no shirt, no service. Do I have a second? Second, let's vote on it. No need to discuss it. Passed unanimously. Come on, people, let's not become conceited, provoking and envying one another. My brother back here, he, he was, you know, I, he, you, you know that Brandon, well, that's not really one of those kind of red tie wearing guys. He's not flamboyant. Have you noticed that? <laughs> but he's a deacon. And he, he took his sandals off while he was playing the guitar. <laughs> and I think, you know, at the age that he's at, 33, yeah. I think he'd say, if, you know, if that is going to stumble my brother, I, I'll wear my sandals. Are, are sandals okay? Yeah, keep the sandals on. Jesus wore sandals. I heard a senior just say that. <laughs> Jesus wore yeah. You know what's really offensive? To our sensibilities. <laughs> when the preacher keeps us in church this long. <laughs> Do I have a motion to adjourn? Okay, so moved. Here's the second. This is it. It's the last slide. Are we going to be able to solve this problem with three deacon couples? The heart of Bell Road. The mind of Bell Road. The strength of Bell Road. No, we're not going to be able to solve the problem, but... Can this be a major season of growth ahead when we say, you know, it's just, today it's just socks, but tomorrow it might be a matter of life and death. And I want to have a church that has been trained to spot legalism for what it is. And even to be able to say, you know, I, I, I want to talk to your sister, I want to talk to your brother about this, but I don't want to be legalistic about it. I just want to share kind of my sensibilities, my feelings.
Can we grow up? Instead of provoking one another, love each other, joy each other, peace one another, patient each other, suffer with one another. I'm ready. Is it going to be easy? Not really. Is it going to be fun? Yeah. It's going to be fun. I don't like to view myself as a legalistic person. I like to view myself as gracious, kind, gentle, patient, peaceful, loving, joyful. But once in a while, I get negative. So I want to do the best I can to not be a negative force in your life. I hope that when you come to church, that it, even though if I bring up some passages that kind of rub you the wrong way a little bit, I want to be your friend. If the red tie offends you, you know, if it actually offends you, I can get rid of the red tie. As long as these shoes, you know, I, I hope it doesn't offend you that I'm overdressed. <laughs> Apparently I am. I'm the only one here with a suit and a white shirt. We, our time is well spent. I'm going to ask our people who believe in the power of prayer, who are willing to avail themselves to pray for you, to come stand at the altar. If there's somebody here who has never asked Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior, and you've come to church because you want to learn more about Jesus, I'm going to come stand down here at the front. And I would like you if, you, would, if you feel comfortable, I'd like you to come up and just tell me, I'd like to know more about Jesus. If there is an issue in your life you need prayer about, there are people here who believe in the power of prayer who will pray with you and share God's word with you. Brother, what song are we going to sing? Leaning on the everlasting arms. Let's make it an us song. <laughs> come to the altar. What a fellowship, what a joy to find.